As someone who's a fan of not only Doctor Who but filmmaking itself, I've always found Doctor Who fan films to be really interesting projects. Doctor Who itself has this nature where it's kind of customizable to each person's tastes. It's a show where not only can the main actor change, but basically every part of the show has been altered at some point to fit some kind of new vision. And I think that gives it a certain appeal for people to imagine their own takes on the program. What would my Doctor act like? What would my sonic screwdriver look like? How would my TARDIS look? As well as ideas for different companions, different settings to visit, and just an overall unique vision for the show that is enabled because of the show's ability to change. So I always find watching fan films really fun. It gives you a chance to see someone else's vision for the show, which often ends up being very weird and very entertaining. But there's also the kind of the scrappy, low-budget filmmaking side of things. Obviously, Doctor Who as a program is one that kind of requires a hell of a lot of resources. So to see people actively with even less than the actual program has, attempting to pull off these grand visions for stories, it's always really interesting and entertaining to see how they pull it off. How are they going to make this work? So I figured, you know what? It's probably about time that I start reviewing some Doctor Who fan films on my YouTube channel, because I think they're worth talking about. And I figured, why not start with Plastic Treachery by the wonderful, much-loved Matthew Toffolo of Batman March. Plastic Treachery is an earlier example of a Doctor Who fan film of YouTube, being released back in 2010. And unlike quite a lot of Doctor Who fan films, it chooses to do an adaptation of classic Who as opposed to new Who. Matthew Toflo in it plays a version of the fourth Doctor, in which he journeys to Earth and comes across a Auton invasion taking place on a college campus. Right off the bat, I want to say that whilst this fan film is very clearly drawing inspiration from Classic Who, it has a really interesting fusion of both Classic and New Who concepts. Obviously, a lot of the presentation from the way it's shot, the way the story unfolds, a lot of the music and tone is very in line with Classic Who. But it takes time to kind of graft on the best aspects of New Who, and I think it works really well here. The fact that you have a more ordinary contemporary setting, the way it opens with all the different news clips and new reels feels straight out of the Davies era. And having the Doctor interact with the Companion's family and be in their own home feels very reminiscent of Series 1. And it's something that I really like in this. It adds that little extra bit of humanity that I think Classic Who could have really benefited from with its Companions, whilst also not going so far in the direction of New Who to make everything a bit too melodramatic and a bit too rushed. Speaking of rushed, the pacing for this story is kind of impeccable. Weighing at three roughly 20-ish minute parts, the story is like the perfect pace. It doesn't drag nearly as much as a classic Who story can, but it doesn't feel nearly as rushed as a new Who story can. There's enough time to establish the setting, the situation, the characters, and to let things ramp up to a point of sustained tension that eventually is all resolved in a nice big climax. It's basically perfect. <laughs> Um, at least as far as I'm concerned. Like, no, don't get me wrong, if you went through it with, like, a fine tooth comb and attempted to analyse every possible flaw of the narrative, I'm sure you could find one. But as just a piece of fan film entertainment, it's incredibly watchable, even more so than some episodes of the actual show, I would argue. So that's one thing I really loved about this. And that's another thing I have to credit it for. Despite the slightly shorter running time than your average classic story, I think it allows it to really build up a good sense of the middle point of the story, that sustained tension that I think New Who can really struggle to hit, where you have all the action kicking off and everyone's kind of trapped in the situation and attempting to get out of it. That's some of the most fun in Doctor Who for me, and I think Matthew does an excellent job of capturing that in his story. On the technical side of things, this is also an interesting area. Naturally, being a fan production from 2010, a lot of it is kind of rough around the edges, but the roughness never feels like it's down to inability or lack of knowledge, but more so just down to the limitations and circumstances of the production. Obviously, the camera quality is dated by now, but equally, there's a certain kind of nostalgic charm to it that I can't deny. Just seeing everything through this kind of slightly older, digital tape camera quality, especially with all the 2010s fashion and hair, it's like a little blast from the past, which I can't deny was particularly enjoyable. Whilst everything is far from perfect, there are definitely flaws in the editing, in the overall blocking, there's a basically a lack of lighting in most cases, 
and the audio is fairly rough around the edges. It was never distracting or overly detracting from the whole experience to me. And in fact, I think this really demonstrated just how much competency and skills Matthew and his friends actually had. Not only is the editing generally pretty well done and flows very well, despite some slightly awkward moments, but overall, I think Matt and his friends really demonstrate that they did understand how to roughly stage and block and direct a story like this. Things are never too cluttered, too flat, and there's some particularly impressive shot composition in times considering what they were working with. On the audio front, whilst some of the audio can be a little muffled and hard to hear, and the background audio is pretty much always changing, there's not like a consistent wild track they recorded for it. Again, it's understandable considering the context of the production, and with the exception of some early scenes in episode one, most of it is pretty audible, and the mix with the music is actually really really well done. The story uses a lot of classic Doctor Who music, which is nice as it not only sets the tone for the story really well, but it sort of acts as a little kind of fun smorgasbord best of classic Who soundtracks collection. You can have fun going, oh that's the soundtrack from that episode, that's the soundtrack from that episode. But equally, it all really works in the story. I think the music is never distracting, never overbearing, it's always mixed at a nice level with the dialogue, and really adds to it, enhances a lot of the scenes that it's present in. Also on the technical side, the general execution of things like the monsters and the special effects, whilst clearly having limitations, again, was never overly distracting or overly poor so as to ruin the story experience for me. You can tell they only have one Auton suit, but I think they did a good job of communicating the sense that the place was being overrun by Autons. And I think the bit with the plastic chairs, where they're all ganged upon by plastic chairs, again, very fun moment that's that seeded and executed really well. It's, there's a good little, like, oh shit, the chairs are plastic moment, which I really love. It all felt very fitting, very appropriate, and executed probably as well as it could be considering the time and the age in which they made this. And that's another thing to mention. As far as I'm aware, Matt was probably only about 17, maybe 18 at most when he made this, which is really impressive to say. And I imagine most other people involved in the production, at least as far as you can see on camera, were of around a similar age. And considering that, I think the acting in this fan film is also generally of a pretty high quality. Matthew Toflo is obviously doing his best Tom Baker, and I have to commend him for capturing so many of Tom's little mannerisms, even some of the more subtle or less obvious ones that are in there. And yeah, he really works. Matt does a really good job, especially considering his age. And my god, does he get those Tom Baker gahs in there. Those weird Tom Baker barking screams. Uh, put the compilation on screen of how many times he does that. <laughs> Building on top of that, a lot of the performances from the other characters in this are also, I think, really solid. The girl playing the companion has a very likeable presence and does a really good job considering that, yeah, this is a like a teenage fan film, like by all means. She's very likeable, I think there's a real kind of genuineness to her delivery, and I like the way this character's written as well. The fact that she is giving these what feel like fairly realistic human reactions to things. Again, that healthy combination of a Rose with a Sarah Jane. She has kind of like the classic Who companion tropes of say like a Sarah Jane, but with a bit more of like the bite and the grounded grittiness of like a Rose in there. And that works really, really nicely. In all honesty, there's very little that I can really criticize this for, that aside from you know, fairly superficial production things. And considering the time in which this was made, the experience I imagine everyone was at, the kind of technology people had access to, it really shines as a very entertaining, successful fan film that I think offers a vision of a kind of fusion of classic Who and modern Who that frankly, I'd like to see the series move in. I think it's a really healthy balance of the two. And we can only hope that one day, Toffolo will be the name taking the showrunner credit. Overall, those are my thoughts on Plastic Treachery. It was a real surprising treat revisiting this one, but I have to say, I had a great time with it. It's a fun, light, but still 
serious enough story with some good stakes, some good action, and a healthy balance of classic and new who attitude. Check it out, I highly recommend it.